Okay, uh, I'm Jeff with TNT First Aid. Today we're going to talk about the Fat P, uh, built by TNT First Aid, sold by ReadyMan. Um, it's their TNT Fat P on their website. We're going to talk about all the different components that are in the kit and how to treat injuries. Everything from cleaning, disinfecting wounds, to treating burns, major arterial lacerations, the right way. If we do things the right way, uh, we can help reduce the, the need for second aid or emergency room uh, visits, things like that. So. Uh, we're going to have the PowerPoint going here as we go through this kit. Um, a lot of the things people do wrong are cleaning, disinfecting wounds, or using the wrong products on wounds. So you can see on the do nots list, a lot of people are guilty of using alcohol, uh, hydrogen peroxide, betadine, uh, tap water, things like that, and they think that's cleaning, disinfecting the wounds. By using alcohol on a wound, it's actually toxic to the tissue, it burns, it hurts. Uh, we don't need to use that. So. We'll open up this kit and talk about what's in here that we do want to use and when we want to use it. So um, you've got different compartments or sections here on this. Uh, one of the things in your bandage pack is 30 milliliter Salajet wound rinses. Um, in order to use these, all I need to do is twist the top off. I can get a good jet spray. This is sterile saline that I can initially clean or irrigate a wound out with uh, should it have a lot of debris uh, inside there. I've also got antiseptic spray. Antiseptic is benzoclonium chloride. It's only 20% the strength of alcohol, yet it kills all the same bacteria. You're just not going to cause stinging and pain by using this. This is just a pump that I can uh, mist or spray. Remember to put your gloves on. You've got some nitrile gloves in here. Uh, two pair of those um, so that we can keep clean and sanitary. And then you've got a full, you've got some uh, hand sanitizer and you have a full bandage and med pack in here. Uh, so that we've got all of our different types of bandages, different sizes of bandages, uh, everything from, uh, they're all fabric bandages. We don't like any of the plastic. So you have all of your cleaning wipes, gels, ointments, triple antibiotic ointment, all of that in there, as well as large patch bandages, fingertip, knuckle, extra long bandages, and then there's some steri strips in here. Uh, those steri strips are for any sort of a wound closure that we're not using our wound seal on. Uh, so those are all in your bandaging compartment of this kit. Um, so clean and disinfect your wound, that's super important. Get it nice and cleaned out. Use extra uh, wound flush if you need to. You can even go to your eye wash if you need to use your eye wash uh, to clean that out. So we've got some slides of some of the do nots and then uh, even simple antibacterial soap and water is going to help you greatly in cleaning and irrigating a wound. And then in here you have non-adherent or non-stick pads as well as gauze pads. Gauze should be used to absorb blood, get padding to an injury, um, clean out a wound. Your non-adherent pads is what needs to be used when you're putting a dressing on, not just a bandage but a dressing. So you're going to use your non-adherent pads first and then uh, you can go ahead and wrap that which you've got four different size rolls of uh, thin gauze, conforming gauze to go ahead and wrap those up. Okay, Non-adherent means it won't stick to the wound. Um, disinfect, use ointment in moderation, don't over lubricate the wound, uh, they need to be able to dry out. Change your bandage every 12 hours, that's one of the biggest mistakes people make is they leave a dirty bandage on there. So change your bandage every 12 hours, watch for any signs of infection which are tenderness, swelling, uh, redness and pain. Okay? So make sure you watch for those. Uh, and then again, go to the app, download the app Virtual Medic, it'll show you how to make your own sterile saline in there so we won't go over that. Um, because you're going to have that in the app. Uh, wound seal. Wound seal is a hydrophilic polymer powder. It's got potassium ferrite in it. So I open this up. I've got two types of wound seal. One, I've got uh, wound seal vial. This is equivalent to 30 stitches worth of powder. The other wound seal I have in here is wound seal with applicators. This is to uh, get to a hard to reach place. So say you have a cut in the ear, you have a nosebleed uh, where you can't dump the powder in there, you're going to use the wound seal uh, with applicators. Dip the applicator in the powder, slide that in the nose. There's videos on the app again on that as how to uh, properly use your wound seal. The nice things about wound seal are they work on people who are hemophiliacs or on blood thinners. Um, it'll stop the bleed. Okay, it doesn't matter if they're on blood thinners. Uh, it covers and protects the wound, it creates a scab. That scab's a little more pliable of a scab. Uh, unlike your regular scabs that crack open, uh, this actually has some flex with it. 
I can use this on anything where I don't have a tendon or ligament uh, that's been lacerated. And even then, if I need to use it to control the bleeding, that's fine, um, but that it's not gonna repair the tendon. It's gonna heal with 70% less scar tissue than stitches. This is even being used now in open heart surgeries down in Florida and other places as well. So uh, Wound Seal is an absolutely amazing product that comes standard in the Fat P. Um, so don't be afraid to use that. We're gonna show you a few slides here uh, that you'll see. Um, this first one is a knee laceration, uh, really a, an avulsion. All that tissue's been removed. Um, this is an injury I treated. Uh, I spent a lot of time picking out all of the gravel from this wound, cleaning it out really well, and then I used the wound seal. There's got to be blood present in order for the wound seal to bind. Uh, otherwise, it's like baking a cake and you don't have any liquids. It's just going to stay a powder form. In this particular uh, slide series, we didn't have a lot of blood there, so I used my antiseptic spray that we talked about, and I actually just pumped a little antiseptic spray on there just to give it a liquid to bind to. The second uh, image there in the middle of your screen is 12 hours after the wound seal was applied, and then that's the knee five days later. You can see there's no sign of infection at all. So uh, wound seal can be one of your best friends for small or large uh, lacerations that are non-arterial. And then these images that you're seeing now, this is a 12-year-old boy that sliced his finger all the way down to the tendon sheath. Our concern was, did he get the tendon? He still had flexion and extension, so we knew the tendon was undamaged. His father's a paramedic. He put the wound seal in. So this next slide is just 20 seconds after the wound seal was applied uh, to the wound. You can see it's already drawn closed. In this case, we had him buddy tape two fingers together, uh, just using his waterproof tape, uh, just so we didn't have any bending until everything had really solidified and that scab had been formed. Um, this is a day after the injury, so his father sent these uh, pictures to me almost daily so that we could use them to show you guys the power of wound seal. Um, two days after the injury, you can see the slide there. Three days post-injury, the skin's pulled together. Okay, this is going to heal with less scar tissue than stitches. Five days post-injury, it's almost healed with normal tissue rather than scar tissue, which is what happens when we heal from the outside in. This heals from the inside out. Save the family around $2,500. When you save $2,500 on one injury, uh, especially if that's out of pocket, you can buy five of these kits for the amount of money that uh, you've saved just from one product in the kit. So you can see we've thought through everything that's uh, in these. They're not a basic first aid kit. These are a kit that are built and designed to take care of you in a disaster and save the costly ER visits. Now two weeks post-injury, that finger is completely healed with very, very little scar tissue uh, to show inside of it. Okay, uh, In the app, we talked about uh, punctures to the chest. So go to the section where it talks about uh, chest seals. You'll see a couple different videos of the products used for the chest seal. Okay, And then we have arterial bleeding. Um, this pack comes with our favorite tourniquet, which is the uh, RATS tourniquet. Um, they have the new RATS Gen 2 tourniquet out there that's very compliant, six inches longer. Super easy, quick tourniquet to apply. So here's one that's open. Uh, we have a brand new app video on how to use this tourniquet. It's all done in real time so you can see an arterial wound and this tourniquet being used uh, to slow the flow of that arterial wound. Okay, and then we have our quick clot. This pack comes with quick clot, which those of you that are familiar with quick clot know that it is a military product, uh, came out of the military. This is not the generation of quick clot that heats up and cauterizes the wound. This is the generation of quick clot intended for home and family use as well as EMS. So there's no cauterizing. It's got kaolin. Kaolin works with the body to create factor seven, which is the clotting factor. Um, so it speeds up that clotting process. There will be times you use quick clot that you may not even need to go to a tourniquet uh, because quick clot's going to take care of that. Another great product out there is the new stat, which is a hemostatic gauze. Uh, uh, it's a long 36 inch strip. You can see on the app now we have a video for packing that in to a neck wound because there may be places that you can't use a tourniquet like a neck wound uh, for obvious reasons. So that's when you'd want to go uh, straight to your quick clot or your new stat, whatever you have uh, with you for that. And then there's app videos on making your own homemade tourniquet, which I can just use my triangular dressings, uh, which are here in the pack to make my own homemade tourniquet if I need to. Okay, so enough about bleeding. Let's talk about sprains and strains. Sprains and strains 
are something that people treat, they try to treat them right, uh, but the problem is with a sprain or strain, if I use ice and I don't ice and get that area cold enough, I don't cause vasoconstriction. If I don't cause vasoconstriction, I continue to bleed in there, which ultimately re uh, results in swelling uh, in that extremity. And the more I swell, the longer it takes before that swelling's removed, the longer it's gonna take before I can get back to my daily life, the longer it's gonna take before I could have surgery in order to fix uh, whatever's torn or damaged. Okay, so in here, you've got the instant ice wrap. Instant ice, one hour of this wrap is equivalent to 12 hours of icing as far as the amount of anti-inflammation that we're gonna get from it. Much more comfortable, it's an 11 foot long wrap, so you can cut it down to size. Uh, if I just had to wrap my wrist, which you see we do that in the app video, if I just need to wrap a wrist, I may use a sixth of the wrap. And then you follow the instructions on the back. It's reusable just by adding water. You can get three or four uses out of a wrap. Um, so you have two of those that come in this kit uh, standard, as well as you have an ice pack that uh, comes in this kit. But those only last about 10 minutes, okay? They're really more for putting on the back of the neck during the nosebleed or that initial comfort after a sprain, strain, or deep contusion, uh, you've got that. But this is kind of your long-term solution to uh, those sprains or strain, okay? Ice is unnatural to the body. The body pulls blood to an area. We ice it. The body has a tendency to pull more blood to that area because it wants to warm it back up, okay? It doesn't know what you're doing with the ice. Where with the instant ice wrap, we're using evaporative cooling instead of uh, direct cooling. Uh, from an ice pack. So these are one of the favorite items people have in their kits uh, to use for any sort of a sprain, strain, closed fracture, anything like that where we have a lot of bruising and swelling uh, going on in the extremity. Okay, So these uh, pictures that you're going to see up here right now, um, this is actually my foot. Uh, it was a comminuted displaced fracture of the fifth metatarsal um, that I did last fall. By the time I went and saw a foot doctor, I didn't go to an Instacare, an emergency room, I knew it was fractured, um, but I knew there was nothing that could be done immediately. Swelling had to be gone. By the time I went in and saw the doctor, a uh, day and a half after the injury happened, by using the instant ice wrap and then another product that you can buy separate, the Arnica oil, all of the bruising and swelling was gone from the injury. Uh, it was something they could do surgery on uh, that day uh, had I opted for the surgery. Um, so that, that kind of shows how powerful this is because feet swell up really bad when we fracture them. So uh, again, amazing product. Uh, just continue to reapply it. Okay, when we talk about fractures, the only fractures I really would ever go to the emergency room for is an open fracture uh, or a displaced fracture where I have gross deformity. So if I compare my two arms and one of them does not look the same shape as the other one, I may go to the emergency room for that. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to go see an orthopedist to deal with my fracture. I'm not going to go spend the money for the three x-rays, $1,400 to walk into the ER and have three x-rays, to have them put a splint on. So you have a 36 inch long stat splint. Those of you familiar with the SAM splint, this is a lot like the SAM splint. Um, I can mold this, I can x-ray through this. It's also got a protective coating on it that I can clean it off and reuse it. So I can make this a finger splint, I can make it an arm splint, a leg splint, I can make it a cervical collar if I needed something to help immobilize. If I suspected a neck or back injury, uh, I could help immobilize the cervical spine using my 36 inch long stat splint. So that's found in your side pocket of your kit. Okay, and then uh, fracture forks are something you can buy in addition uh, at TNT or at ReadyMan. Fracture forks uh, use vibration to help detect fractures. That's how I knew for sure that my foot was broken before I ever even had it x-rayed. Okay, and then let's move on to our burn section. So we have a large uh, pocket in here, and what, what this has in it is a four ounce burn gel, a uh, uh, four by four burn dressing, and then it's got this large face dressing uh, for burns. One of the common injuries in the home is kids under the age of four pulling a pot of boiling water down onto their face. Most people in the home go to water. Uh, you go to the kitchen sink when you get a burn in the kitchen to try to cool a burn. Water doesn't have the viscosity or the capacity to draw heat out. This is a burn gel. Um, it's 96% water in a gel format. It has melaleuca or tea tree in it. Okay. 
the number one cause of death from a burn is infection. Okay? And when we cool a burn using water, one, it's not effective. Two, it actually introduces bacteria into the burn that we don't want there. But in the event that we have bacteria in the burn, uh, the melaleuca or the tea tree in the burn free is going to go ahead and help fight any risks of infection. If I beat the body to the blistering process, then the body doesn't have to blister. It blisters in uh, an effort to try to cool that area. And when I have a blister, then I have dehydration because that fluids come from somewhere else in the body, as well as um, now I run the risk of infection because I'm going to have broken or damaged skin. So apply this two to three times the size of the burn as quickly as possible, help cool, help relax the patient, and draw that heat out of the burn quickly. So you can see a slide up there uh, talking about things not to use and, and the risk of infection and so on and so forth. Okay, and then there's a, a new app video on our app uh, showing the burn free being used on second and third degree burns as well as the bottle being used on uh, first and second degree burns. Okay, so we haven't forgot the eyes in all of this. You have a pocket that has everything just for eye wash. It's got eye pads. It's got as your uh, small eye wash amples, okay, half ounce amples, as well as your eye cups. Uh, the way we properly rinse or irrigate an eye using an eye cup is you open up the eye cup. Most people try to tilt their head back and they put something in there to flush it while well, they push the particle or the debris deeper into the eye. With this, I twist the top off this. I'm going to fill my eye cup full of the solution. Now this has a pH of 5.3. This is for particles, not for chemicals. So fill your eye cup all the way full. Okay, it's a slow jet stream, so just be patient with it. Fill it full. Now all I need to do, a kid can do this. I don't have to force the eye open. All I need to do is lean my eye down in this and begin to blink. The eyelid now works as an agitator, a washing machine. It's going to pull the solution through it. And because I'm leaned forward uh, at the end of this, all my particles or debris or sand or whatever was in the eye is going to fall to the bottom of the eye cup. So uh, don't tilt it back and push the particle further. We want it out of the eye. So we lean forward and flush the eye that way. And that's how we get that out of the eye. So you have that in your kit as well as a buffered isotonic solution. This has a pH of 7.0, which matches the body's pH. There's an oily barrier on the eye. And when I have a chemical get in the eye, it bypasses the oily barrier, and then that oily barrier closes up. So this doesn't work super effectively because of the pH where this does for a chemical in the eye. I'm simply going to, if, the eye, if this eye is affected, I'm going to twist the top off. I'm going to turn my head to the side so I don't flush the problem from eye to eye, remove the seal and the cap, and then just begin to put this into the inside corner of the eye and let all the chemical flush out. This will penetrate that oily barrier in the eye instantly and begin to neutralize a chemical, whereas water, contact lens solution, anything that has a lower pH is not going to do that. And then you've also got some eye pads in there so that if we need to bandage or cover the eye, we can do that with the eye pads. Okay, and then you have a foreign object removal kit. Uh, you can buy this separate on TNT's uh, website or on ReadyMan's website. Uh, inside here, you've got your tools for splinters. You have a good sharp pair of tweezers. You've got a splinter probe, um, which is a three-sided tool, uh, which helps you to be able to get in and underneath a splinter and remove it. You can see that works right up underneath the tissue and then we'll lift to where we can gain access to or just remove the splinter that way. And then you have your eye magnet and your eye loop. Super great tool if you do anything where you could get debris in the eye, which is pretty much any of us any time. Um, one end of it is your soft nylon loop. I can take this soft nylon loop. I always start at the outside corner. I can run that right across the eye. It won't scratch or irritate the eye, but it's going to extract whatever objects in there. And the other end's a magnet. So if I get a metal shaving in the eye, I can just pluck that out using that. You can see it's a pretty strong magnet. It'll pick up my tweezers. Okay. And then it comes with alcohol wipes. So clean and disinfect uh, your tools um, before you use them as well as after you use them just so we don't spread any form of bacteria uh, with it. Okay. And then a couple other things that are in the kit that we really didn't talk about uh, in using the slideshow. This pocket, you've got a Dynastopper blood compress. Uh, you have a 5x9 as well as an 8x10 and a larger roll of Curlex. 
So that's just a bleeding section uh, of the kit. And then you have a four inch Israeli bandage as well. Um, we don't have a slide showing you how to use that, but that's your common uh, four inch Israeli bandage, very popular uh, for people, especially military and people that understand how to use those. You can even make that into a tourniquet. And then we have in this pocket, we have a two inch Coban waterproof tape, transport tape. We have a three inch ACE wrap, uh, same material that your instant ice wraps are, just not uh, treated. And then you have a three inch Coban in there as well. And then in the front pocket, you have a CPR pocket mask. This isn't a cheap flimsy uh, pocket mask. It's actually something with a one-way valve. So when a patient vomits during uh, CPR, which they almost always will without an advanced airway, uh, we don't get that vomit in our mouth. And then you have a 60 cc syringe irrigation kit uh, in that next pocket down. Um, this has a tray in there. I can make my own sterile saline uh, by using betadine wipes, which if you have our app, you can see how to make your sterile saline. Now I've got a large syringe that I can pump or irrigate that out uh, with. I'll just set that there. And this front pocket we leave open uh, so that you can add any additional items that you need to add. Uh, you're an EMT or somebody that has a blood pressure cuff and stethoscope, they fit in here well. A glucometer, a pulse oximeter, anything like that. We're not fans of packs that are stuffed so full that you can't get another uh, uh, single item in there because everybody needs to customize their packs. These packs are laid out the way we lay them out. There's also trauma shears and a pen light in here. They're laid out the way we lay them out. I recommend you take everything out of your trauma kit. You lay it out in a way that makes sense to you and you're going to remember where stuff is. Um, or you can leave it as it is. Uh, the last thing in here we didn't talk about, you've got some triangular dressings. Uh, so you can make a sling and swath uh, or you can help hold your splint in place or anything like that. So as you can see, this is a very complete pack. Uh, it's got everything for common injuries from lacerations to sprains, strains, fractures, eye injuries, uh, CPR, things that we need. So go to the Ready Man site, check this out. Uh, TNT first aid for any of the stuff that Ready Man doesn't have. Um, you'll definitely want to pick up these uh, items from us.